impacts me, something that surprises me, and so I'd like to read you this poem that was written by Sarah Josepha Hale in the year 1830. So an old poem, been around a while, all right? And I'm going to read this for you, and it goes like this. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Is that a new poem for anybody? Have you heard that one before? Okay, one, one of us here, okay. Uh, we need to get out more a little bit here. <laughs> but uh, no, I think many of us are familiar with that poem. Everybody knows that Mary had a little lamb. But why did that poem surprise and impact me this week? Because it did, okay? The reason is this. I learned that this week, the poem's author, Sarah Josepha Hale, was the key figure in instituting Thanksgiving as a national American holiday. Did you know that? No. And when she wasn't writing nursery rhymes, she took it upon herself to write to five presidents over the period of 17 years, imploring them to establish Thanksgiving as an American national holiday. She was the driving force behind it. And so for 17 years, she kind of got to no, 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 and no. And then finally, Abraham Lincoln thought, you know what? We're just recovering from the Civil War. Maybe we need a holiday to kind of remind us of who God is and remind us of all the reasons we have to be thankful for. And so they instituted the national holiday of Thanksgiving. Interesting, huh? The author, Mary Had a Little Lamb, um, was instituted as part of that. I've seen that happen. So Hale and Lincoln did this because they saw Thanksgiving as a way to turn our attention back to God and follow in the footsteps of the American pilgrims. And back in the day, before it was a holiday, it was established as a meal in New England, but it wasn't until it became a national holiday that the rest of the country really got involved in the process. And Hale thought it so important that we be thankful that she persisted for 17 years to try to make it a national holiday. But is Thanksgiving thankfulness really that important? It's just kind of optional, right? We just have it as a time to eat turkey and kill time before Christmas gets here, right? That's kind of uh, maybe where our culture is going with Thanksgiving. But I think Sarah Hale and Abraham Lincoln were on to something. Because the Bible echoes the importance of Thanksgiving again and again and again. And it's not only uh, optional, it's something that's polite and courteous, yes, but it's also necessary. It's also essential in living a godly life. It's more than just a nicety. It's the express will of God for you and for me. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Very short verse. Many of you may have this all memorized. But it says this. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I'll read it again. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I've talked to many people who want to know God's will for them. So, but it's most often the idea that I want God to tell me what I'm supposed to do next. Like where I'm supposed to find a job, who I'm supposed to marry, where I'm supposed to go to college, things like that. They want to know God's will for their lives. And for you, I don't have that answer written in scripture, but I do know that God's will for your life is this, that you give thanks when? In all circumstances. And there's the rub, isn't it? All circumstances. How many circumstances is that? All. all of them, right? Okay. How many circumstances do we have that's not covered in all? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. There are all circumstances are a platform with which to give thanks. And that's a tall order. Because sometimes it's easy to give thanks. Because you're doing good, you're feeling grateful, turn the attention back to the Lord at Thanksgiving. But other times, this thing seems like thankfulness is like the furthest thing from our minds. Either we're hurting, we're in trouble, and just we don't really, it just doesn't come across our minds to be thankful. And as such, it seems like this command is often one of those inaccessible ones, right? You know, this is one of the things that God told us to do that I just can't do, so I'm not even going to try. That doesn't seem like that. But what I want to do today is talk about some of those all circumstances and show you how Thanksgiving is accessible. And if we dare to do it, what kind of effect it will have in our lives, okay? And here's where we're going today. Here's our big idea. A person that is consistently thankful is a person that is consistently joyful, okay? A person that is consistently thankful is a person that is consistently joyful. 
And today's message is an important one because we've already talked about that to be thankful is God's will for me and for you. But it seems that most of us, we don't really know when we're unthankful. It's not as if we're just walking around saying, man, I am just ungrateful for about pretty much everything, right? We know he thinks that way. We just kind of live life, we respond. But let's just assume, because Scripture tells us this, that we are all unthankful for, to a certain extent, okay? And so this message is for me and is for you today. So let's talk about five circumstances where we ought to give thanks, okay? We're not going to talk about all circumstances. We'd be here a little while. So I picked five. Okay? First, the first circumstance where we ought to give thanks is when times are good. When times are good. When something happens that we like, okay? So we have a good Thanksgiving dinner with our family, that's a good time. Or when your boss says, well done, or when the Cubs win the World Series, right? Okay, times are good. Or maybe you just have a good chat with a friend, you feel connected. When things are going good, when things are pleasing, those are times with which to thank the Lord. And we all have times like these, okay? Even you pessimists that are out there, you cynical people, okay? You have times that are good. If your car started this morning on the way to church, something went right, okay? And so you have a reason to praise the Lord, even if it's mundane like that. Because James chapter 1 says what? Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. How many gifts is that? Yeah. Everyone. See, we're kind of getting this right. Every gift comes from the Lord, even the mundane little things in our lives. And our posture when we receive one of these gifts is to turn our attention back in thankfulness to the Lord. And that may sound rather easy, right? But do we often respond to this like Nebuchadnezzar responded to a gift in his life? Nebuchadnezzar, you remember from Daniel chapter 4, was the king of Babylon. And so he received a blessing, and this was his response. Daniel 4, 29, it says, At the end of twelve months, he was walking on the roof of the pal royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and says, Is not this great Babylon? Stop. Things are fine right now. The king's just appreciating his kingdom, right? It's a great city of Babylon. But the problem is, is when it goes on, okay? Is not this great Babylon which... I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty. When Nebuchadnezzar saw something good in his life, where did his praise go to? To God? It went to him, to Nebuchadnezzar himself. And when we run into good times, can we do a little something like that also? When things are good, we can turn it <coughs> as well. Say, we get our paycheck at the end of a couple weeks. Look what I have done. My money. Look what I have worked so hard for. We can be stingy with it. But it is not your money. It is God's. He provides everything. Or we can take the gifts and skills that God gives us and maybe enjoy the praise of people a little bit too much. What a hard worker I am. Boy, everybody should be like me. Or what a beautiful person I am. Everybody should look at pictures of me. Or what a good preacher I am. What a privilege. For you to listen to me. And we can tend to in, internalize it and, and take the attention of others and enjoy that a bit too much. And when we do that, we become like Nebuchadnezzar. And if the attention is on me, who is the attention not on? God. And if we rob him of his glory, we rip it from his hands and we place it on ourselves, and does God share his glory with another? No, he does not. You know the story of what happened to Nebuchadnezzar? God struck him and he turned almost like a cow for seven years. <laughs> he lived out in the wild and, and uh, did some insane things. God had to humble him for his arrogance. May God not have to be quite so drastic with you and I. And if we struggle with this, it's because we have a theological problem going on in our lives. It's because you think you got yourself all that good stuff. But where did all that good stuff come from? God, the giver of good gifts. And we turn the praise back to him in gratitude for those good things. And gratitude is really the antidote of pride. You can't be thankful and proud at the same time, because by definition, thankfulness is humble. Okay? So we turn the praise back to him in times of good. So, in good times, circumstance number one, be thankful. Circumstance number two, this may be a bit tougher, when we are suffering physically, when you're 
suffering physically. Now, when we're hurting, we're in pain. Is that in all circumstance? Yeah. Okay. It is. And this is a hard one for us because whenever we're suffering physically, we just want the pain to do what? Stop. Go away. Take it away, Lord. We don't want to hear about all the blessings that we have. We don't want to have somebody with a bright chipper attitude remind us of all the good stuff that we're experiencing. But God calls us to something a bit different. Not to be consumed by the pain, but in the pain, be thankful. And there's three reasons really for this, why God wants us to be thankful in pain. And the first one is this. When you're thankful in physical suffering, it reminds yourself that you're more than just a body. You are more than just a body. When your leg hurts, does that affect your eternal destiny? When you have cancer, does that cancer affect your soul? No. You are more than your pain. And some of us don't realize that because when we're in pain, we think we kind of clothe ourselves with this painful identity that this is all who I am. Is this all who you are? No. In our pain, we are so much more than that. And if we're grateful in our pain, it focuses our attention that we were made for more than just to be experiencing things in this body. And that can be very encouraging <coughs> if you're hurting. The second reason we can be thankful in physical suffering is we remind ourselves that God can use us, even in it. The Apostle Paul suffered a little bit, and we've all read these verses here, but they're so true. Where Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 had a thorn in the flesh. Does that sound pleasant? And we want to sign up for thorn in the flesh. We'll do those, hand those out at Thanksgiving time here tonight. All right? No. And he said he pled for God three times to take it away. To take it away. Did he stop after that? Did he say, okay, if God's not going to take it away, I'll just get angry and bitter for the rest of my life? No. His response was different in verse 9 and verse 10 here. God answers and says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He says he's content in the pain. Why? Because God can use him differently, more powerfully in the pain, because he's not relying on his own strength. And God can use you and I in our own physical pain. And when we're thankful to God in the pain, it reminds us that God is, I'm not broken. He can still use me and still use me in a powerful way. You have heard the name Johnny Erickson? Okay. Now Johnny Erickson, she was swimming in the Chesapeake Bay when she was just a kid, dove head first and, and ended up crushing her neck, became a quadriplegic. And uh, from her teenage years, I think she existed like that. And in 2010, she got breast cancer on top of it. And this woman has probably, she's felt more pain in her life than I have, I, mean, I know. But she uses that as a platform to give praise to God and to encourage thousands of others because she writes books, she speaks at conferences, and she doesn't make the pain an excuse to stop and die. She uses the pain to give praise back to God. And in that, God has used her in a miraculous way. Thank God in your pain. And he can turn your pain into glory. Thirdly, another reason to be thankful in physical suffering is just to become an example to Example to others. When you know people who are going through pain, it speaks a little bit differently whenever you run into folks who are complaining about their pain and ones that are just thankful in their pain. And which one are you more encouraged by yourself? I'm very encouraged by those who remain steadfast and thankful even though they're suffering. And the guy who did this the most, I think, was Lloyd Merriman. Remember Lloyd? He, get, he was hurt. Okay? He had a lot of stuff going wrong with him. He had something going on inside that if he he damaged it wrong, and this something would rupture, and he would die on the spot. That's what, that's what Lloyd lived with, day in and day out. But did Lloyd ever talk about that? No. Okay, he was hurting, but he kept talking about the Lord and being thankful for everything he had been provided. And Lloyd was a constant challenge and encouragement for me, saying, you know what, my head hurts today, but you know what, buck up, Jonathan, let's get on with life. <laughs> All right? Lloyd was a wonderful motivator, and whenever we focus on the Lord during our pain, we can do that for God can use you in a powerful way. And so there's three reasons why we have to praise God in our pain. And when we do that, we choose gratitude and we inject joy into a time that is honestly very, very difficult. And God can use that way. So, we're thankful for God in times when they're good, in physical suffering. And the third one may be a bit tough here, but in family turmoil. Family turmoil. And the reason it's tough is because this hits close to home, okay? Because it's hard when your family's a wreck because it seems like your home should be a safe place, right? Because, you know, people out in the world, they're crazy, they're difficult, maybe work is hard, and then when you come home at night, you want to come home to a place that is safe, that is trouble-free, that's a refuge. And for so many,
take away from you, and being thanks, thankful to God is a refuge that you desperately need in times of hardship. And that's how King David saw it. Because King David had a, a messed up family life for a little bit. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, he had just committed the sin with Uriah. Okay, so he committed murder. He's got a mistress who is in the wings whose husband just died. Now he has a, a baby son who's uh, <coughs> suffering and about to die as well. David's family was in turmoil. And after this child dies, David does this. David arose from the earth, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. For David, his family struggle was not an opportunity to get bitter and angry. It was an opportunity to turn his worship and gratitude back to God. And that gave him strength to face all the difficulty around him. Because you realize that even though all the vitality you have may feel stripped away, you have a source of strength that nothing can touch, and that is God himself. And gratitude locks us into that. And we can take hold of his strength for our lives. And so remember him in Thanksgiving and allow God to strengthen your heart in the trouble, in the turmoil. So three circumstances we have to thank the Lord. In good times, in physical suffering, and family turmoil. Number four is this, in the struggle against sin. The struggle against sin. Because we all battle sin in our own lives, okay, every one of us. And if you're not battling any sin in your lives, it's because you're just wholeheartedly giving in to the sin, okay, you should probably wake up, all right? But we all battle because we're Christians and we live in this world and there's a war for our hearts. But as we war against sin, it is an underestimated tool to fight that sin is to be thankful. Why? Because temptation is a lie. Okay, we talked a bit about this in Sunday school. Or at least it's a half-truth that's meant to lead you away from God. Because when the snake talked to Eve, did he feed her what was true? No. He says, if you eat this fruit, you will surely live. Okay? And so oftentimes we struggle with those lies when we're in our own hearts. It's not a big deal if I'm lazy at work. Okay? It's not a huge issue if I lie. It's not a big issue if I watch this movie filled with language, nudity, and violence, okay? And we war against stuff like that. But if we develop a posture of thankfulness in our lives, and that cuts through all the deceit as we remember who God is. Because think about it. If Eve had turned this back to the snake and said, you know what? I'm so grateful for everything that God has provided me. He gave me a home. He gave me a husband. He gave me a job. He gave me himself. In order to, to communicate with and talk with, could that have thankfulness and protected her? Yes, because it turns her attention on what she's been provided. Because when we're tempted to sin, we do it to fill some void we think we have. And if we're thankful, we remember that God has already filled the void. And therefore, sin becomes a lot less appealing when we remember God's provision for us. So turning to God in gratitude becomes, becomes a powerful way to stand strong against sin. Temptation. But, whatever times of temptation come, you're probably not going to remember this. Okay? And so I've always thought, you know what, ahead of time, you know you're going to face this, this temptation, write down on a 3 by 5 card in advance, okay, these are the reasons I have to be thankful for. These are the reasons why I don't need to do this sin, okay, because God's given me this, 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 and this, and this. Write those on a card, and when temptation comes, you may not remember that whole list, but you'll remember, hey, I have a card that I wrote down to talk to myself whenever this happens. You whip that card out, you remind yourself what is true. And if you do that, I think God can use that to give you the way of escape that he promises in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Right? So, we've talked about four circumstances where we can give thanks. In good times. What was the second one? Uh, when you're struggling physically, yes. Uh, whenever we're in uh, physical turmoil there, whenever we have uh, family turmoil, when we're struggling against sin, there's one more I'd like to talk about before. And that's emotional turmoil. Emotional turmoil. And this one is probably the most common one. Okay? Where we carry a heavy load and for whatever reason, we're sad, we're angry, we're lonely, we're despondent, we're confused. And the reasons where we experience all those things are so complex. Okay? You can't possibly talk about them all in one sermon. And so I don't have any magic bullet to offer you to solve it all right now. But what I do know the Psalms are filled with people who feel this exact same way. The Psalms are filled with people pouring out to the heart, their heart to God in the emotional turmoil. But whenever we see this happen in the book of Psalms, they always turn 
their attention back to God in the end. But even though this is all that's going on, but God. And this happens in Psalm 42, where it says, verse 11 is this. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. I love this verse, because is He in trouble? Is He in heartache? You bet He is. He's in turmoil here. But is He just twiddling His thumbs, waiting to feel better about a situation? No, he looks himself in the mirror and says, hey buddy, okay, here are a couple true things that is going on here. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation in my God. He turns his attention back to God in gratitude, and I think that's a powerful challenge to each of us in our own emotional turmoil, because you and I are not passive victims of our own suffering, right? We're not passive victims of our own feelings. We have a say-so in what goes on in our hearts. And when we have feelings that come up like this, of turmoil, anger, despair, confusion, those aren't all the feelings we have. We put down our truth anchor in God himself and allow God's truth to, to comfort us and encourage us even in the suffering. That's what goes on here in Psalm chapter 42. He talks to himself and says, hey self, I know this hurts, but this is who God is. And even when our heart is a wreck, we can turn to God and we ought to turn to God is the provider of so many good things. The reason, just as we sum up here, goes, that gratitude is so important is because gratitude unlocks joy. Okay? Just the way it works. Those people who are truly thankful are the same people who are truly joyful. And so I challenge myself. I challenge you here today. Choose joy. Choose thankfulness. Do it when times are good. Don't get arrogant and rock out of his glory. Thank God, because he's your provider all along. When your body hurts, remember that you are more than a body and that God can use you even in your hurt. Thank Him. When your family is in turmoil, turmoil praise to, pray, press into God's strength for you and turn a heart of gratitude back to Him. When you're tempted, remember the void that you're trying to fill by that sin has already been filled by God. He is your sufficiency. Thank Him for it. And when your heart is hurting, remember that your God is your hope and wait for your, His salvation. Is surely coming. And what a wonderful time of year as we kind of kick off our Thanksgiving week to really reflect on what Thanksgiving is and what we can do to really tap into the strength of God and be joyful in our lives. And I just pray that God would do that in my heart as well as yours today. Father God, we have so many reasons to be thankful. Lord, when we realize that every good and perfect gift comes from you, Father, Lord, we can really go a long way down the road remembering your promises and your provisions. Lord, as we encounter even more circumstances in life than what we talked about today, I pray that in those, we will be able to give things back to you. And Father, thankfulness is not just a nicety, not just a polite etiquette thing to do. It's essential for the person wanting to live God in Christ Jesus. And I pray that as we tap into gratitude in our lives, Lord, that you would just give us the joy that we need to walk each and every day in your steps and encourage us as we do it. Father, thank you so much for this church family. I pray that you will bless us as we uh, go our way tonight. We pray for our Thanksgiving dinner tonight. I pray that it will be done for your praise, honor, and glory. Please bring in people from our community, Father. And Lord, may we be here, here and, and, uh, and be challenged by the truth of the gospel this evening. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Tonight is so bold as to make a comment. Uh -huh. I'm talking about being thankful. I realize we have somebody who's a very humble person, but every week he takes this message and puts it on the wall. And I think we need to thank Fred for doing this. He put on already the pictures, doing the, the uh, things last week. He does that silently, but I'm thankful for it. And it helps somebody who can't come to church. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. Thank you, Fred, for all of your hard work. All right, we are dismissed unless we don't have an impromptu testimony of thankfulness and gratitude, which is totally okay. Uh,